Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon to a few out there. It is the Earth Master back here on this Tuesday. I believe it's Tuesday, yes, June 6, 2023, about 10.49 a.m. here along the West Coast. And the latest earthquake shows some uh, movement out in Romania with a 5.0 coming in uh, into the Earthquake 3D globe currently right now. It was felt, looks like, uh, across portions of Romania. Very shallow earthquake about 15 kilometers deep or so. Uh, this earthquake coming in within the last 22 minutes. Uh, the interactive map here shows the general location. Looks like uh, out here around western Romania. Not for sure of the population density out here. Looks like there's a couple towns nearby. All right, uh, getting at the USGS map here. Did see a little bit of activity across the Caribbean plate once again. Been watching this area for some heightened movement. Uh, we did see a four-pointer come into the Haiti area way early this morning, about two o'clock in the morning, my time, a 4.9 just offshore. But there is uh, some towns here nearby along the coastline and a very shallow earthquake. So this was definitely felt uh, and potentially uh, created a little bit of damage out there. Uh, for the rest of the Caribbean plate, uh, let's see what we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Let's pull this up here. Looks a little bit more quieter today, uh, following this 4.9 from early this, mor this morning. Uh, over the past, well, about three or four days, we've noticed uh, quite an uptick in movement across the Caribbean plate. Still kind of watching that, even though it's quiet for now. Um, definitely need to keep an eye on a few things out here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some movement up into the Alaska area as well. A couple quakes kicking up across the northern edge here of the Pacific Plate and the uh, North American Plate boundary here. 4.7 along the Aleutian Trench. Let me pull up the uh, USGS map here. See what we got. Uh, there's that 4.7, the Aleutian Trench from early uh, this morning, just like about an hour or so ago. Can't really say early. Um, over here in the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, too, a uh, recent earthquake with a 4.4 and down here into, uh, into Japan, 4.7. So things are somewhat active here across the northern edge and the northwestern corner here of the Pacific Ring of Fire, as a lot of people like to call it. Uh, so slight uptick here in earthquake uh, activity today. Also getting a return of clustering around the Indonesia area again and the Maluka Sea it's going to be this area right here across the Indonesia Islands area. Not a whole lot showing up on the USGS map. These are only four pointers uh, with the latest one of 4.7 there near the Maluka Sea. But as you can see, there's quite a few twos and smaller quakes there in that cluster of earthquake activity. Back around the uh, Fiji Islands here in the Tonga region. Got uh, one earthquake here. From early this morning, about 6 o'clock my time, 134 kilometers deep today, 4.5. Uh, so continue to see a little bit of back building here in the deeper edges of the Tonga Trench. A little bit of movement here across the Kermadec Trench as well, a bit further south here. But I don't think we got anything major going on across New Zealand currently. But let's just go ahead and give a quick glance here at the... Um, the earthquake drums, let's see what we got uh, for movement. This, this here kind of gives me a, a good indicator of what's going on just by looking at these drums. Not a whole lot today. There was some activity last night uh, down around South Island, some smaller quakes. But uh, for the most part, things look fairly quiet there across New Zealand currently. Continue to keep that area in mind though with the uh, lack of movement recently. All right, uh, Big Island of Hawaii. Got a little bit of activity around Pahala currently kicking up. Nothing big. In fact, only uh, about seven earthquakes or so in the last 24 hours. That's a, a small number compared to what they've seen in the weeks and months past around the Kilauea volcano. Uh, let's check out the hazard notification system here from the USGS in regards to the Kilauea volcano. The latest update was put out yesterday, it looks like. We haven't got uh, today's. But uh, basically, I'm sure the same thing that uh, currently not erupting and that um, seismic activity is somewhat dwindling. Uh, we can check out the seismograph stations here across the Kilauea volcano area. Uh, we'll go to this site and just look at a uh, local seismograph station here. And it looks like we're missing a little bit of data. Well, it's filling in, I guess. 
but for the most part 24 hour map here let me pull that up once again looks like earthquake activity is kind of dwindling down uh, but again we'll continue to watch this it's been having its days where it uh, will quiet down as far as seismicity goes and then we'll kick up all of a sudden all right uh, west coast activity see what we got a little bit of further movement here around the southern edge of the cascadia subduction zone of course we had one yesterday right smack dab on that mega thrust area with a 3.5 uh, overnight looks like uh, 1.8, a little bit further inland, but shallower uh, up around the mountain area southeast of Eureka. A little bit of spotty activity up into the Pacific Northwest as well. Getting some movement again outside of Reno. This has been an off and on thing here across the area. The latest quake of 1.4 near Cold Springs, Nevada. A little swarming activity there. Rest of California, the Bay Area fairly quiet. Uh, as we get down to Southern California, it looks fairly quiet as well, um, at least according to the USGS. There's not a whole lot here on the map either, far as the EMSC goes with the reporting. And the rest of the country uh, looks a little bit more active here. Notice this line of activity across the, uh, roughly about Texas, Oklahoma. You can kind of draw a line, if you will. Uh, that's most likely due to the uh, movement that we've seen around the Caribbean plate here recently with the general northwestward plate movement here. As you can see, Caribbean plate kind of gets squeezed and pushed around. A lot of momentum and pressure being um, pushed up into the North American plate here, the continent. And, uh, of course, areas around the um, U.S., seen some effects from that the arrows here pointing in the general direction of uh, gps movement so we'll continue to watch that with that heightened activity down in haiti uh, for some further movement up here north of the region so most of the areas today around the southern plains oklahoma area getting quite a bit of earthquake activity nothing big but still as we can see a noticeable uptick in earthquakes across the states here a new Madrid zone as well. A little bit of activity out into the South Carolina and around the Great Smoky Mountains area. Although these two quakes here from last night, still an overall sign of some seismic uptick in that area. Uh, Yellowstone National Park doesn't look like too much going on up there, but we will double check that. And for the most part, things look fairly calm there. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity at all. Uh, some type of outside interference there at this station that's been having some technical issues it looks like here recently but as uh, far as earthquake activity goes fairly minimal all right let's see here alaska there's that one earthquake uh the rest of alaska these are all mostly smaller microquakes we're getting a little cluster of movement here across the trident volcano area westward um but this is, again, this has been a, a little sequence of uh, earthquakes there for a little while. Um, let's see what else we got. Middle America Trench showing a 3.6. Uh, one earthquake coming into the South America region. <coughs> Excuse me. 3.1 just now, it looks like. Uh, this area has seen some deeper movement off and on here over the last couple days. Let's see what the USGS here is reporting. A couple earthquakes shown up here on the map, 4.4 and a 4.4. One from yesterday and one from today. A little bit uh, deeper movement going on here today, though, underneath this area. Into the Peru Chile Trench, uh, 237 kilometers deep. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, we'll definitely watch areas around the northern uh, section here of the Pacific Plate with elevated activity today. Uh, could see some further movement, of course. The Kurokamachaka Trench is long overdue for a, uh, a much larger quake. They've had a series of, oh, I don't know, we can go 4.5 and above. Still, though, this is not a lot here for the Kurokamachaka Trench. Only a handful of quakes, maybe a five here and there. But uh, for the most part, this thing's building up enough steam here for a, a much larger magnitude quake. Not for sure exactly when it's going to happen, but uh, it's definitely got the potential, I believe. 
All right, let's see what else we got. There's that quake in Romania. Far as the rest of the region goes, mostly smaller microquakes across the Mediterranean and the Turkey area. Atlantic Ocean, quiet. Not a whole lot going on for earthquake activity. All right, space weather movement here. Let's see what we have going on on the sun. Anything major? Doesn't look like it. The flare chart here overnight in the last couple days shows uh, basically low-grade sea flares, if that. Haven't seen an M flare in a little while. Looking at the threat level for right now, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 30% chance, 10% still for the X flare category. And looking at the magnetic structures here of the sunspots, Oh, goodness. <clears throat> so this has kind of died off rapidly, the center portion uh, sunspot here that's facing us. And still, still kind of watching this one on the southeastern limb. It looks uh, a little bit more disorganized, though, from the previous image. Notice here, uh, when it was further back, uh, looks a little bit more complex. Today, still got a little intermixing of the polarities here in the magnetic field lines, <clears throat> but... It does look a little bit more broader and disorganized today. So either way, we'll keep this one in mind. And uh, that is probably about it. I mean, there's not a whole lot of other sunspots here that are worth watching uh, unless they pop up out of the blue and uh, get, you know, get some energy going. The UV filter ray here shows uh, the flaring a little bit coming from that sunspot as mentioned about the only one I'm thinking may flare up. Uh, but aside from that, uh, things look fairly stable there for the most part on the sun. Not looking at any major auroras. Aurora forecast right now, very minimal at the polar regions. And the three-day geomagnetic forecast calls for a whole lot of green, but not green in the skies, unfortunately. Green on the chart, but we want this into the yellow or red or other colors that uh, Kevin decides to put on here at solarham.net. All right, weather today, uh, getting another chance of thunderstorms out here along the uh, west coast with a marginal risk here for severe weather. It looks like mainly in the Sierra Nevadas and up above Redding. Uh, very, looks like 2% chance or less, less than 2% chance here for tornado probability in all the areas. Most of the threat today at very minimal levels with only uh, wind and hail events. Not really looking at anything major for severe weather goes. Uh, the thunderstorm outlook today here, fairly active across the west coast, but I don't think we're going to see too much here in the valley. We've got some cloud cover right now where I'm at, just outside of Chico, 69 degrees. Uh, but Redding, Redding got a pretty good storm last night in areas north and into the mountains, but uh, I think that's where it's going to stay again today. Unfortunately, the valley creates a sinking air, uh, and which basically kills all of these storms that form uh, in the mountains and try to go over the valley so they, they, they just don't make it either way fairly active far as thunderstorms go across a good portion of the west intermountain west and uh, even out there into the new mexico and texas area all right guys i think that is about it um i don't think we got anything major uh, going on far as any um, activity. It looks like maybe a little bit of movement up there around the volcano in uh, the Alaska area. Looks like a little bit of earthquake activity um, created a ice rock avalanche. Uh, but for the most part, um, yeah, it doesn't look like too much activity kicking up there. Just a little bit of uh, avalanches, earthquakes. Yellowstone, here's the update from a few days ago. There's, again, this has been very quiet. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, but for the most part, 148 earthquakes there during the month of May. But this is actually a very small number. Only seen a, a couple small swarms there back in May. 
Uh, but for the most part, you know, Yellowstone's just kind of behaving. Um, the ground deformation, or lack thereof, Yellowstone Caldera recorded a slowing of ground subsidence, which has been ongoing since 2015, and the possible occurrence of a small amount of lip uplift. This pause is this pause in the subsidence and transition to slight uplift occurs every summer, of course, as groundwater or snow melt and runoff percolates into the surface, subsurface, and causing the ground to swell like a wet sponge. So that kind of makes sense as uh, far as seasonal deformation goes. As far as uh, any volcanic activity, Yellowstone uh, continues to sleep. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here and watch the weather for a little bit, see how uh, it plays out today as far as thunderstorm activity goes. Have yourself a good one. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. Take care.